Welcome back guys. Um, I was getting a lot of comments and messages and stuff on my intercooler setup slash radiator setup and there seemed to be a little bit of possible confusion or if you're new to turbocharging or whatnot. So I thought I'd make a video kind of going over different types of intercoolers, what I have, what's what. Um, when it comes to intercooling, there's definitely more than one way to skin a cat. And so I guess I just talk about that today. Okay, first things first, I see this cooler I have up in the front of my car is the radiator for the engine. This is what cools the engine just like in any other car. Uh, yes, it is small and skinny and long and silver. It kind of resembles a air to air intercooler from just looking at it real quick but this cooler has nothing to do with cooling the turbo this only cools the engine just like in a conventional car okay on my red mustang here i use what is called an air to water intercooler and we will get to that in a moment before but before we get into that uh we're gonna go over here to my little 2.3 turbo here and talk about intercooling just to begin with and air to air intercoolers. So on a turbocharged car, you don't have to run an intercooler at all. You could literally just do a pipe from here, just picture with me here, and just run it straight to the throttle body. Just pumping air straight into the, into the engine from the turbo, no cooling whatsoever. And that would be perfectly fine, but the problem is turbos make a lot of heat and pumping hot air into your engine is really bad for it it's it creates detonation it's bad for efficiency it's just all around not good um so what you can do is get an air to air intercooler and that's what this is now it's this is one off of a little diesel truck it's pretty ugly but it is an, an air to air intercooler it's not a radiator and how that works, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Boost comes out of the turbo. It goes into this inlet. It is then cooled through these fins, and then it goes into the engine. And air to air is, is just how it sounds. Air from the turbo is coming in, boost pressure, and then you have cold air, or outside air temperature, cooling the boost. Now here's the problem with air to air intercoolers is they're not as efficient as an air to water because this cooler depends on how hot it is outside. Now if this cooler is in the winter, it's 32 degrees out, you have 32 degree air passing over your boost, cooling it really well. But say it's summertime and it's 110 degrees outside, you have 110 degree air trying to cool, you know, even hotter air, but so it's not gonna work as efficiently if it's hot outside. Okay, so there's air to air intercooling. Uh, one other quick thing about air to air intercoolers is the sweet thing about air to air is you literally just buy the cooler and bolt it up. There's no, you don't gotta worry about water lines, anything else, the cooler is the cooler. That's what you're gonna find on 90% of your turbocharged vehicles most of all your uh, factory stuff is all air to air intercoolers. The majority of even your aftermarket guys um, on everything is just using air to air intercoolers just due to the simplicity. No, they do not cool as well, but they don't require any pumps, reservoirs, or anything else like that. Just one other thing to mention. Okay, now we're back to talking about air to water intercooling, what I have set up on the Mustang. And air to water intercooling has been around for a very long time. It's not new, but it is not as common. And it's kind of, you see a lot more in the higher performance uh, type of stuff, not so much in just factory equipment, but you do see it still. So on this, you have your turbo, it makes boost. It's going through this black tube and the intercooler is this silver box I have in the cow panel here. It looks pretty small from this angle, but it actually 
it actually is quite large. It goes all the way into my dash, kind of hidden in there. And so the cooler, it comes in, it cools, and then it goes straight back into the motor. And what is, obviously you're not gonna get any airflow over this, this cooler here. That's because it's not designed like that. It is designed to be cooled by liquid. And that's what this hose is running in. Maybe you've seen that in my car. Uh, running on the inside of the car, there's a hose on each side of the cooler circulating coolant constantly through this. I had a couple guys ask me if these were fuel lines. No, they are not fuel lines. They are water lines going to the intercooler up under my dash. You never want to run fuel lines on the inside of your car exposed. That would be very dangerous. So, those are water lines. Okay, when you have an air to water intercooler, you need some sort of reservoir uh, for your liquid. And that's what I have in the back of my trunk here. Now, I think this is where some of the confusion came when they seen me put antifreeze in here and they thought this was going to the engine. This is has nothing to do with cooling the engine as I was talking about, just because I'm putting antifreeze in this. I only put antifreeze in this because my garage, if it's not perfectly heated and it freezes in here in the winter time, liquid's liquid. It will freeze no matter what it is, and I don't want it to freeze in my intercooler and break the intercooler or in these hoses or fittings or anything. So it's perfectly fine to put antifreeze in your air to water intercooler liquid. Now here is the catch 22 about air to water intercoolers where here's the drawback. Like I said, there's many ways to skin a cat and they all have their ups and downs. But the problem with air to water intercooler is you have to keep the liquid cold somehow. Now there's multiple ways to do that. Some guys will use what is called a heat exchanger and which is kind of like a small radiator to complicate things even more. I don't run a heat exchanger because this is more of a dedicated drag car. I do drive it on the street some, but when I'm making one pull down the pass, one pass down the track for five seconds, um, what I do is I just load this box up with ice. I put as much ice in there as I can. So then I have about 40 degree water in there circulating through my intercooler core and so yes there's a little tiny bilge pump like what you'd find on a boat and i have that just on a switch and it just that little pump right there just constantly pumps water through these lines and then back at and it returns back into this tank so that's the bad thing about putting ice in here is it's really only good for about one run and then when you come back uh that water will be lukewarm and so you got to ice it down every time you make a pass. But here's the good thing about air to water intercooling. Like I said, it's very efficient. It works very well. If it's we're, it's July and it's 100 degrees outside and I have 40 degree water in here, then I'm seeing 40 degree chilling temps on this intercooler. So it doesn't matter how hot it is outside. I could care less because my intercooler is cooling really well because I'm using ice water to cool it instead of air flowing over the top of it. So that's where air to water intercooling works really well. Um, but it has a lot of moving parts. You have to have a lot of pumps, reservoirs, lines versus an air to air, which isn't you know, as efficient, wherever it went, I put it over there, but it's less complicated. So that would be air to water intercooling. So yeah, guys, that's basically the two main types of intercoolers. You just kind of have to decide on what's best for you. Um, if you're more of a street guy, you want to drive it on the street all the time, I recommend an air to air intercooler uh, because your water will get crazy hot and uh, where an air to air will constantly just keep cooling it with outside air temperature. Now, if you're more of a drag guy, you trailer your car to the track, you rarely drive it on the street, uh, an air to water intercooler is probably what you're gonna wanna do just because it works that much better. Uh, while we're talking cooling boost, uh, you can also cool it chemically. Um, via, you guys have probably heard about methanol injection or water meth. And what that is is you don't run any sort of uh, 
external cooler you can you can run meth as a supplement to either one of these coolers but uh, you could also run it with no cooler at all either it's its own system and how water meth works I don't have it on this car but I have ran it in the past basically it's a it's um, you have a little reservoir with a pump and then you have we'll just kind of it's kind of like this line you have a fogger with a nozzle and then that pump sprays the liquid meth water mixture into the engine and you're cooling your boost just from spraying water into the engine and you're probably thinking if you're new you're like man spraying water into your engine isn't that going to mess it up and stuff and it's not like you're spraying a garden hose in there it's super ultra fine high pressure mist and because it's so fine it vaporizes and just pulls heat out of the engine before it would say hydro lock or something like that um water meth also has its place it it doesn't work as well as just a really well engineered intercooler it does work though once again it's kind of like air to water you have to have methanol you have to have reservoirs pumps all of that the real kicker on methanol injection where its downfall is is if you're methan if you're tuned for methanol injection and you're relying on that as your main cooling source um, and your pump goes out or for whatever reason the methanol injection doesn't kick on your engine is going to blow up it will i mean not saying it it will but you it greatly increases the risk of that because your engine was tuned for that cooling it had a malfunction and it will just melt down whereas the same thing can happen on an air to water intercooler setup too to say if your pump were to stop circulating mid run or something but uh, those are highly uncommon failures but just something to consider so yeah guys that's different types of intercooling how it works maybe i cleared some clarified some stuff up for you guys who were unsure and uh and if you did know then well here <laughs> i guess this was a waste of time but uh, thanks for stopping by the shed and I'll see you guys in the next one.